الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد So Alhamdulillah I was in Pakistan the last uh, uh, nearly the last two weeks you can say and I was invited by this particular organization called Nasiha Institute that are based out of Lahore and uh, these are people who are working very uh, out of the thousands or hundreds of thousands of madrasas that there are in Pakistan and they've got a beautiful structure and set up called the Wifaq system right where the syllabus is all connected and, and so on these particular guys they're working in a very specific group of people which is the so-called educated elite or so you can call it you get a similar uh, kind of educated and wealthy elite in multiple countries like uh, India I've seen that in India I'm sure there is in Bangladesh I haven't been there yet but I've had some communication with a few people and definitely in Pakistan now what does this mean for a lot of people who may even be from these countries but have not really been to the big cities into those countries, they will know nothing about them because the villages are very different in England there's no such thing as a difference between if you live in uh, Leicester or uh, Dudley right I don't know why Dudley came to mind right or rugby or London or Manchester the same amenities of your house the way things are will be available at the roads and everything whereas when you go to these countries it's a big difference between what you get in Lahore and what you get in a small village somewhere else right even in Punjab itself and then even in Lahore there are different areas there are the elite areas where mashallah everything is spick and span like I, I stayed in the defense area which is run by the army it's this huge part of Lahore that the wealthy people live in and uh, nice roads very clean very good amenities shopping traffic very organized none of the hustle bustle uh, and uh, I mean there's still a bit it's not the same as England completely but it's amazing in that sense so you've got a massive distinction between the haves and the have nots and it's only getting bigger apparently right so there's people there who just have huge amounts of uh, resources and money and things like that so now with regards to all this uh, this particular mashallah institute and uh, the, the second institute is in, based in Karachi called the Hikmah Institute so these are ulama or nearly ulama who have been through the normal system but they're also university educated from the top universities of Pakistan and many of them also have studied in the West who are they focusing on? they're focusing on literally that educated crowd who are very far from the deen a lot of them unfortunately they're very good people uh, many of them but they're suffering from apathy They've got everything. So in some of these uh, uh, cases, they'll actually think that religious practice is for the lower class, right? And this, this is a, unfortunately a parallel issue when you have too much, you feel satisfied. Now, interact, these people are working in, in this. So they have been working as maybe lecturers and other things before. Some are still like that, but they've started this institute and they've attracted students from these kind of families. And most of these students are from these top universities with degrees there and sometimes degrees from the West as well. And now they're doing Alim course, or at least a four-year course. They've got multiple courses for them because not everybody can commit to the full Alim course as such. So that's what they're working on, right? Most of their education and communication is done in English, right? You'd be surprised, right? It's done in English. So it's either English and Urdu mix or it's English. And they only listen to English in the sense that that's only what they're impressed by. It's just what they are. They're only impressed by foreign brands. Very different from the villages. And I said that if you're from a village or whatever, you will not understand this. You don't even know this exists. Uh, it, it, this kind of a thing exists. So I've been uh, um, invited multiple times to India and, and been exposed to this for the last, I would say, probably uh, eight to ten years now. So that's uh, probably a bit more than that, actually. That's where I've gone to understand this. And it's a really important place to work. Because the, those same people from that particular crowd are those who become the policymakers. They're the ones who run the country. They're the ones in the big corporations, right? They're the ones who make the country into, you know, at least the legislation and so on. And if we don't work there, and the, a lot of them are literally very far from ulama. 
For example, there was one kid, he's mashallah become guided, right? Very wealthy family. I had to do a lecture, you know, uh, within a certain area, um, in his area. And I gave my lecture in English, just about the love of Allah. And his parent wants to now um, meet me, right? Um, I, I didn't think that was that significant. Later he tells me, you know how big deal that was? My f they, they, they don't want me to be religious. It's been so tough for them that I've kept a beard and I've started doing these things. So for them to want to meet you is a massive deal that inshallah we're getting somewhere with this. It's all Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing. Right? Just to give you an idea of the mindset. So, so these people are they're working on the main university. So in Lahore, for example, the top two or three universities, they are like the Oxford and Cambridge of Pakistan. Anybody who studied there, they're like, I studied there. I, I don't want to necessarily mention the names here, right? But there's places like the LUMS and the BNU and a number of other universities, right, for example. So if you studied there, it's like, I'm an Oxford graduate. You know, I studied at Cambridge. I read history at Cambridge, you know, as they, as they say. So it's a big deal. Now, mashallah, a lot of these people, we, uh, 30 of the students from this institute that are from this background, we took them to a khanqa, 10 hours away. It was a 10 hour drive. I've never done a 10 hour drive in London. I was actually, I, I was actually quite dreading it. And I felt even half felt like cancelling it. It was a huge shaykh, mashallah. Uh, but when I found out that 30 of them are ready to go, I said, Bismillah, let's go. And Allah made it very, very easy. And they were absolutely taken aback. You know, both by the shaykh and his humility and kindness and, and just amazing nature. And the whole situation that, you know, uh, in, in this spiritual retreat. Never been to one before. They'd never been to one before. So they're seeing another side of it. Allah bless them all. Such beautiful people, mashallah. So, uh, we've, the local, uh, our local friends there and students, they've been working in these universities to try to bring that and change. So I remember four years ago, 2020, I was told that I had to give a lecture in one of these universities. And I was shocked at what I saw. Okay, I've given a lot of lectures in the universities in England, you know, everything from Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial College, UCL, you know, it's the other one in London, all of these King's College, all of these main ones, I've, I've been to pretty much all of these universities, right? And when you go to these universities in England, they can't have a divider because there was this big issue several years back before they used to have dividers, but there was some big issue. So now they usually don't have a divide in between, but it's very well organized. The brothers will s sit on one side, the women, uh, the sisters will sit on the other side. Just naturally, that's, that's the way they do it, right? Here, when I went four years ago, they were sitting mixed. I was shocked. This is Pakistan, right? Muslim country, they're sitting mixed. And the question, uh, it was, my whole talk was about apathy, right? Actually, that time. And the questions were crazy. Like, I, I never get questions like that from university kids here in England. Not to say it's impossible, but I'm just saying I was shocked by the level of question. Then, that, uni that university in Pakistan does not have a masjid. They don't have a prayer hall. Imperial College has had one for years. Oxford, all of these places have prayer halls. Prayers. They don't have a prayer place. Just now there's something going on to try to make one after how many years? Just so you think that, you know, just so that you know what I'm talking about, right? Very liberal. It's a liberal arts college. It's very liberal. What the, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not here to mention everything that goes on there, but it's crazy, okay? So we went outside into the hall afterwards to pray namaz. Out of the 70, 80 people, only about 17 or 18 joined us. Whereas in England, when I've been to a university, it was namaz time, everybody prays. You understand? Everybody prays. So this time I was also had to give a talk at that university and I wasn't sure what to accept, expect. It was uh, a program with myself and Muhammad Hijab. So he spoke first and then he went. When I got there, uh, his talk was actually an LBGT, LGBTQ, right? 
Alhamdulillah, this time when I went in, the women were sitting separately from the men. It's like, wow, Alhamdulillah, I mentioned that. And uh, I was told that, mashallah, our brothers have done a lot of work there. So we're getting somewhere. Right. Give you another example. Four, four years ago when I went, I was in Peshawar. Now Peshawar is KPK. That's Khaybar Bakhtun Khwar. They're Patans. And they're very, they have a lot of modesty and, uh, and, and so on. But this university, again, they, I'm not saying they're all universities. Some are very, you know, like University of Punjab is different, for example. So it's, this university, they would not allow, because we were at the house of one of the lecturers, who's a Sayyid, mashallah, but he said that the university does not allow any Islamic lectures to take place. Right? And there's multiple reasons for this. It, it, some of it could be animosity towards the deen, some of it could just be animosity towards, to say this, um, maybe that they just haven't been approached in the correct way. And they've got a certain twisted mindset regarding the ulama, right? That's another one. And uh, sometimes the ulama have maybe not tried in a different way to approach them. There could be multiple reasons like that. They would not let Islamic lectures take place there. So no, you know, you can't. That's what happens. That's what happens in Islamophobic places here. You know, you can't invite an Islamic speaker. Allah, Allah. Alhamdulillah, at that house, they invited the vice chancellor of the university and somebody else to come. And uh, I was told to give a lecture in, Urdu, uh, in English. Make sure you speak English, basically. Don't, by mistake, speak Urdu. That, that English is just amazing now that you speak in English and you're done. Like, you know, they listen to you. So I'm speaking in English and I spoke about, I can't even remember what I spoke about. I've got it written down somewhere. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. There was another sheikh with me, he also spoke uh, to them privately as well. And they agreed that they will start allowing Islamic talks to take place. Sometimes it's just that they've got suspicion, they've had a bad experience, and just need that. Now the problem with all of this work really, which some people will not understand, is that you're, you have to put yourself out there. And you have to go into these sometimes mixed environments in the sense that they're mixed, which is not our way. Right? We, we don't do this in our own places at all. We're very strict on that. So when it's our program, I've been, uh, just before I left, there was a big program I was part of here. And they asked like, uh, how it, I said, it has to be completely clear. In fact, the Nasiha Institute had a massive conference, right? Uh, in which about over 800 people came and all the tickets were sold out. And the way they did it was wonderful. It was a big auditorium and they had the guys sitting. And then after that, the auditorium is actually done very well. It actually has curtains and then it has another row of seating on top and it's completely dark. So they had the women at the top and whenever the lights would be on during break, the curtains would be closed, right? And that was, you know, with Mashwara, that that's what they did. So when it's our program, we're very careful. But what you have to do, and this is, you know, after Mashwara with uh, some of our shiyukh, that you have to work in these places. Otherwise, if you don't, then we complain about others who work there, who don't represent, you know, what we would consider to be the orthodox way of doing things and they're just going to be influenced by those kind of people so it's a we don't do this with any kind of um, it's not fun in that sense but it's important right it's important because we would never allow a mixed uh, kind of occasion to happen in our own but you have to go and try to assist with that and Allah help us and Allah forgive us right we go in there ultimately and there's women and there's men we're not looking at the women well, at least we shouldn't be, right? And because that's haram, that's wrong for us to be looking at the women, right? So we don't do that. We just go, we have to do our job, try to convince them and try to get them to study more of the deen, uh, to listen to more good lectures, connect themselves to the deen because these people, they, mashallah, just focused on education and so on. Now, another interesting thing is that there are some schooling systems that are based on Western principles and priorities, right? From a young age to university level. And I've been told that some of them are such that when they take their children out uh, for like a trip, they will discourage them from buying anything local by foreign brands. There's just this obsession with foreign brands. It's kind of crazy. One of these brothers uh, who now has a big beard and mashallah, he's 
he took us, us to a mall, right? Now, in the malls there, you have both some Western brands and you have the local brands. So he's like, okay, would you like to go to Body Shop? I said, what's wrong with you? Why do you want to take me to Body Shop for? We got Body Shop. Why would I come to Pakistan for Body Shop? Are you crazy, right? Uh, Dunkin' Donuts is here. It's like, why do I want Dunkin' Donuts? That's an international brand. I want Pakistani, right? Take me to Junaid Jamshed. Right? So Junaid Jamshed and then there's Almira and there's all of these Pakistan. Like, that's what I want to see. I want to see the local culture. You know, I want to buy some shalwar kameez, you know. I don't want body shop. It's this really weird obsession. Just now, alhamdulillah, because of boycotts, they're boycotting a lot of them and then we had to go to, a, you know, a local brand. But is this among a certain group there? Is that? And it's kind of similar. I'll, uh, I'll maybe explain this later. Uh, slightly, slightly different, but very, kind of similar in places like Bangalore, Bombay, parts of Hyderabad and Chennai, right? Not in my village. Like, it's not like that there, you understand? And it's not like that in Durban, for sure. You understand? And Sahananpur is completely not like that, but in these ways, it's a totally different world. And uh, yeah, in some cases, it's actually worse than the West, subhanAllah, because there's this really weird kind of inferiority complex almost, and so on. And the amount of people that ask me, right, uh, do you think it's... I don't want to get into the politics of Pakistan and going through a really bad time, Allah Ta'ala make it better for them. But a lot of people, they were, because their money just depreciates overnight sometimes, right? So they're like, do you think it's okay for us to live outside? Should we move outside? But these are religious people now. They've become religious in the last few years and they're like, but it's a non-Muslim country and so on and so forth. What do you think? I said, look, I don't know enough about Pakistan, but I think you should stay here, right? Yes, you might have less, you, you know, you don't get that bigger bang for your buck as well, but it's a huge potential down there. There's a huge potential down there if we can work more on these crowds. But yeah, that, that, that's essentially where it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. I must have given, uh, I don't know, I must have given about uh, sometimes five talks a day, right? And that's, uh, to parents in a in a major Islamic school, right? And then to the students, and then to sorry, 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 the teachers. So I had a session with the teachers, had a session with the parents, and these are like hundreds of people because these are it's all Muslim, big, huge, you know. Um, and then at the universities, and then a retreat for these special students, and so on. And uh, very important, very important. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept and make it easy for us. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, it's kind of interesting. It's a whole new area and people should uh, work in that community. We have uh, that kind of a situation on a slightly different level, uh, probably in this country as well, right? At, at some level as well. Alhamdulillah. So uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our brothers there in the Nasiha Institute and the Hikmah Institute who are working under the guidance of the uh, big scholars down there. MashaAllah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and uh, allow the country to do much better and uh, stabilize it and make it uh, um, much more stable and uh, mashallah. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alam. Jazakallah khair for listening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless you. And if you're finding this useful, you know, um, uh, as they say, do that like button and subscribe button and forward it on to others. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته